Hey guys, welcome back to Lunatic Astrology. I'm your astrologer, Lori Lillian, and today we're talking about the whole darn month of June, and I'm going to do all signs. Listen for your rising first sun and moon. Bottom line, some really intense energy happening in the very beginning of the month around June the 3rd as Mercury stations retrograde on fixed star Algol, the same place where the sun set during the eclipse, Scorpio eclipse of lunar eclipse of May the 15th. Things are going to really hit some kind of Mm, intensity here for all of the world for the collective part of it could definitely have to do as well with the amber heard and Johnny, Johnny Depp trial uh, for the good reason that both of them have their natal Venus on this malefic fixed star um, off with their heads and corpses and mayhem chaos and all bad things like that so I definitely think we'll see something around June the 3rd with a jury decision perhaps on the actual trial but for the collective I'm going to say it could just be some kind of real intensity around a uh, an, um, a natural event like a um, you know an earth event like a weather thing or in the week week that follows maybe or something else to do with um the currencies and the stock markets and why i say that mercury stands for mercantile merchandising and the stock markets he's stationing to turn around in taurus a sign of of food and money and food shortages and stock markets and earthy things like coins and currencies and he's doing that with fixed star algal as well and that can very much be about calamity mayhem and losses of some sort so there's just a lot of like watch out for those markets don't don't put all your money back in the markets necessarily uh because i still am a little bit worried about that with that algal mercury turnaround but the good news is mercury is turning around to go direct from the sign of taurus and then he will move back into gemini and then clear his retrograde shadow by around the middle of june sorry to say january by the middle of june and we're going to be getting back into more smooth flow, more smooth action. And certainly the stock markets can only be helped not only by Mercury going in and direct market, direct motion, but eventually becoming uh, visible. However, for a lot of other sky reasons, I would not be like confident. I think this is a bear market that is happening in our time right now. This is not um, the time to like think, oh, yay, it's all going to be a roaring bull market. I don't think so for those investor type folks out there. Now, today we're going to talk about the all signs, but here's a couple of broad brushstrokes of what happens in June. And by the way, next month, I think I'm going to start in July doing one video per sign. If that's something you'd like to see me do, it's a little bit of extra work for me, but I'm willing to do that. Let me know, instead of me piling you into one video, would you like your own little mini, you know, video just for your uh, rising sun or moon sign? If that's the case, please say yes or no in the comments. If I get enough people saying yes, I think I'll start moving in that direction. Okay, this month we have Mercury going direct at the beginning of the month. I already let you know, but I think it's around June the 14th or so, or middle of June, he's out of his shadow period, which is the degree at which he began his retrograde. I think he's, yeah, he's out of there by mid-June. Second of all, Mercury is going to turn retrograde on the very same day, like a day after Mercury stations direct. Now, Saturn, did I say Saturn? Saturn retrograde is a long thing. It happens till October 21st. So you June the 4th, October 21st. 23rd of 2022 a lot of things are happening in in like weird tandem right but I'll, I, anyway because on june october 22nd venus goes into the heart of the sun yeah in libra which is kind of cool that's like literally the day before saturn turns around hmm, i'll have to think about that for a while but like i death digress the bottom line here for you all you have to know is that things that are saturnian are going to go backwards so this is things to do with where you need to go back over old ground to be more disciplined focused and perseverant more strong like strong-willed you know saturn going backwards is not a bad thing it, it, it's like Saturn can go forward and bring us anxiety, fear, trepidation, um, you know, sometimes procrastination, or sometimes feeling daunted by the weight of responsibility when he's going retrograde, which makes him temperamentally, first of all, closer to earth, but also temperamentally kind of going against his grain of the way he normally operates. To me, it's like, excellent energy in fact uh, for example i did this thing called sober sisters back in 2020 and it was during the mercury retrograde that i had the best success of going off of wine for several months because i was able to dig in and i'm saturn ruled as an aquarius rising and really be able to shoulder the the, the responsibility and to be perseverant in my dedication to a sobriety path sober sobriety very saturnian so all of us here today listening if you especially have a strong saturn natally like your capricorn or aquarius sun moon or rising you 
might find this to be a really good thing. Okay. Um, so he's going to go retrograde over old ground. He's in his home sign of Aquarius. So for the whole world, Aquarius is community. It's collective things. It's um, things that affect the masses or the people. Um, Saturn in Aquarius has looked a lot like governance around the pandemic over the last, since 2020, December, when he entered into Aquarius full time. So it's looked a lot like pandemic management rules and regulations, honestly. And uh, retrograde could mean, because his, his forward motion has tended to correspond with the output of new regulations. Like, okay, everybody, you need your vaccine passport and all of that. Let me double check his retrograde times last year. Give me a sec. Well, I'm really glad I checked that because I was right. <laughs> Basically, Saturn was retrograde last May 2021, 23rd to October 11th. And you may remember that was like the summer of, you know, masks are off, we're all vaccinated, life is great, yay us, we're having a great time, uh, good, we're back to normal. And then the Delta wave started to pick up in the fall of 20, 2021. And then that's when the United States and Canada and a bunch of other countries began to put all a bunch of new regulations and to roll back the freedoms, like, um, you know, restaurants were closing again, uh, you know, Things were happening like that here in Canada, but also Canada, for instance, put in to place uh, the vaccine passport mandates that no Canadian is allowed still to this day with a double vaccination to go on a train plane or auto train or plane within our country or outside of our country. And that was instituted in October with a deadline, a literally announced maybe in September, but with a deadline of by October 30th, you needed to have this in place or you couldn't leave the country or travel. And the United States also at the same time put a bunch of more restrictions for their borders in place as well, including testing, uh, PCR testing. So what I'm trying to say here is simple. I'm trying to say is that when Saturn is in direct motion, it has looked like government overreach or government reach or government regulations. And I'm going to predict that this retrogradation is going to, for any nations left that are still holding tight, including maybe China, but Canada as well, it's going to be the beginning of a phase of releasing those restrictions. And in Canada, for instance, there's a lawsuit in September that's being filed with several plaintiffs that the government breached uh, civil, like civil liberties, basically, by enforcing this vaccine mandate to the point where people had to lose jobs or couldn't travel for getting a job and the thing is some of these people had good valid medical reasons not to get vaccinated and still lost their job or they still couldn't travel and like even one of our provinces didn't allow for any kind of medical exemption or religious exemption again against the, violating the civil liberties of our constitution etc so with that pending lawsuit in september for example so you apply this to where you live it's like this saturn retrograde is going back over old ground to do with restrictions and rules and regulations over over the people and somehow it looks to me like this is going to roll it back so starting on june the 4th retrograde retrograde jupiter i mean retrograde saturn going backwards he almost squares the nodes at the end of the month but he doesn't he never will but he gets close to three degrees so it's very critical moment around the 27th of june at the same time he sextiles mars in aries so we'll get to that in a minute, but for the world, I mean, think Saturn sextiling Mars from Aries would be new directions and actions that are favorable regarding rules and regulations over the people in any regard, wherever you live, whatever they are, okay? Uh, anything else I wanna say about that? Mm, no. <laughs> Anything else this month as well? We have Neptune going retrograde on June the 28th till December 4th. That's such a subtle influence because Neptune is not exactly like the nuts and bolts planet. But, you know, for you, each of us, I'll be doing a video on that near the end of the month. So stay tuned for Neptune, Neptune going retrograde um, at the end of the month. And you just kind of don't feel it that much because it starts out on June and he's really stationary and slow moving uh, as he gets ready to go backwards from 25 degrees of Pisces. And anything else going Going on this month, we have a full moon at 23 Sag on June 14th and a new moon in Cancer on June the 29th. I think I will touch down on some of those for each sign if you're Cancer or if you're uh, ruled by Jupiter for the Sag and <clears throat> Pisces folk for that full moon. But stay tuned every month. I do an in-depth full moon, new moon, all signs video. Uh, my feeling with the Sagittarius full moon on June the 14th is that it will square Neptune, which is difficult. And it's a precise or partile square. So that full moon in the sky shining its you know, big light in Sagittarius is going to perhaps, okay, not for sure, but it's like the sun is, is sitting in Gemini, right? And the moon will be reflecting the solar light 
um, in the 23 degree of Sagittarius. And that's a degree that was seasoned by an eclipse. Back in December of 2020, uh, there was an eclipse around 23 degrees of Sagittarius, if I remember correctly. Oh, shoot. Yes, December 14th. I can't believe I can remember that. So that's an old eclipse spot from back in December of 2020. Now, if I think about December of 2020, I think about was 2020 or 2021? No, December 2020. Um, you can think about what was going on in your life back then, what was going on for the collective. What was going on in December 2020? I mean, we haven't got the vaccine rollouts. Donald Trump had not been reelected, but there was all this contention. Um, people were still afraid of COVID. Hmm, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But anyway, um, that is going to square Neptune in Pisces, okay? So, I mean, we're really having this intensity around that 14th of June because a square to Neptune from the sun and moon it makes a T-square in the sky. And it means there's some kind of tension with fanaticism, zealotry, um, you know, beliefs, um, fantasy, illusion, delusion, um, the, the full light of a moon in Sag, courts, court systems maybe, legal things, things to do with travel. This is going to light up but at the same time it's having a duke out with neptune the god of deception illusion and you know and addictions and a bunch of other stuff so in your own life when i get to this for the all signs moons we'll be talking about whether it means any of those things for you for the world um i'm not sure like this monkeypox thing maybe because neptune rules like weird viruses right or like foggy hard to pin down illnesses like they are tiny and you can't see them but they they diffuse the air so monkeypox is now taking around off around the world a lot of conspiracy theory around that one but nonetheless it's not normally deadly but there isn't thing well let's make a new vaccine for monkeypox <laughs> or let's pull our, our stores of smallpox vaccine out of the warehouses because we could use that one. Like, what is this like thing going on? It makes me want to be a conspiracy theorist. So monkeypox has never left Africa. It's now suddenly running rampant through certain populations and um, around the world or rampant, but it's picking up. So uh, for whatever reason, I mean, does humanity have some kind of immune compromised condition right now? Uh, maybe, but all I can say is that it looks like that could be about monkeypox, some big event going on, big June 14th, and Neptune square the full moon in Sag, and uh, we'll see what happens there, guys. We really will, because it reminds me of December 2020 at about um, you know two or three weeks after December 14th. What was the critical storylines going on about the pandemic at the time? Um, what was happening with the collective? Fear was definitely happening with the collective. Okay, there's no doubt about that. But to what level uh, was there still abject panic going on? Because I think that the monkeypox will create abject panic amongst people again for no good reason. I don't think it's going to be an actual deadly problem at all. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm not like, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine. All right, so I'm gonna do the all signs and I, I'm gonna close my window because I'm cold. Anything else? Oh, Mars isn't, yeah, and Mars is going to be in Aries all month long, which is hallelujah. Can I just say hallelujah? I'm an Aries sun, moon and Mercury. So I'm happy about this. And basically, let me come back to you guys. <laughs> basically, um, it's a lot of gumption, <laughs> you know? Mars is like got fire in his belly, action, uh, intensity, passion and drive. And, uh, and so we all get a little bit of like that fire in our belly when Mars is in his home sign every two years. So he's in Aries. The last time he was in Aries, guys, it was like June, mid-June of 2020 to the add six months, like till January, early January of 21. It was like, just as insurrection day in the United States happened with the big thing at, uh, on the Capitol, uh, the White House Capitol Hill thing, Mars was just moving out of Aries into Taurus, but literally he was in the Aries that long back then because of a retrograde cycle. So this is the first time he's been back to his home sign since then. Um, but we will feel more invigorated, but we may also feel more battle ready. You know, if you think about those months as the election was heating up in the United States, for example, as people were polarizing, as there were all kinds of accusations and counter accusations and the thing about Joe Biden's laptop and then the pulling it back and the counterintelligence and the intelligence. And then finally the contested election, right? Everything was a contest, contesting. See, Mars is athletic, Mars is competitive, Mars wants to win, he wants to play to win, he's in his home sign, he's full of fire, he's warrior athlete energy. So you saw a lot of that flavor for those six months. Now, this is only six weeks. Okay, so he's March, March 
May 24th to July 5th, he's in Aries. But so it means that, hey, June is full of this energy. You can use it constructively in your chart. I will talk to each of you briefly about how to use it constructively in your natal sky, okay? So you're not at the mercy of the sky without any like way, which way to go. But um, I also will do a longer Mars in Aries video, which should come out either just before or after this video. Okay, let's get rolling. Check out my Venus and Taurus video, which is out at the time of this recording. I'm recording on May 23rd. This will go to my Patreon community for a day or two or three, and then you guys get it. But I really think that the Venus and Taurus is so great. And then Mars will be in Aries. So great. Why? Because these are sky stories with planets in their essential dignity. And, and, and we got Saturn in Aquarius. So great. Planets in dignity are excellent conditions. Okay. All right. We're going to start off with Aries. And guys, again, I, if you want me to do one whole video for each sign, probably each video will be 10, 15 minutes. Um, here, I usually give five minutes per sign uh, as, when I go through. Let me know, and I will do that for next month. I just need to get my all my energy to go, okay, I can do this. I can record 12 videos <laughs> without losing my voice. All right, let's get started for the Aries people. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my description box for everything I'm offering. May 29th, my Sky Reader six week course starts. If you sign up for my newsletter, you get 33% off discount code and it only costs you $198. Guys, I got about 20 people enrolled. I'm maxing out at 33. I'm recording on the 23rd. If you're catching the wave of this before the 29th, or you don't mind starting a day late if you missed the first class, all replays are available, coaching calls, Facebook group, and you want to sign up, jump aboard. Um, I don't think I'm going to teach teach this course live again, and maybe not till next year, if at all. My intention is to create a little standalone self-study product afterwards, but it's going to be nothing like the hand-holding you get and the, the individual help you'll get if you take this class while it's live, because I am wanting to support all of the 30 students, 33 students through really being able to read their own natal chart, basically, and then be able to use some basic predictions and tools of prediction as well. To really learn astrology, you need about six months to a year. So we're talking about, especially if you want to practice it, we're talking about giving you the essentials, you know, that what you, like the bottom, bottom basic stuff you need to make sense of your chart and timing your best life. Be your own astrologer, time your best life. Okay, hair. All right, let's get going. So let's talk about Aries. Aries by far, sun, moon, and rising. The best piece of sky news for you, bar none, is you have the Lord of your sky, the Lord of your sun, moon, or ascendant in your in your house of you. Now you wait for this every two years because it is a very strong time for you because you can make decisions, take actions, and get shit done. And you're going to do it because you feel motivated because motion, motivation, and movement are Mars features. And you're going to be very directional. You're not going to be scattered. You're going to be focused and directional. You're going to be making executive commanding decisions. You're going to know what you want. You won't suffer fools gladly in the month of June. And you may cut people out of your life or be very harsh in the way you are in terms of eliminating people, places, and things that you think you do not need in your world. And yay for us, because that's something we're okay doing actually, but we get more of that capacity to like just stick the landing on i don't want you in my life and this is why or just walking away because you don't want them or battling standing up for yourself and not backing down or, or, and being an advocate war, warrior hero champion archetype right really going for it you're going to feel like you want to exercise again i already feel it building guys i mean this is may 23rd and tomorrow mars goes into my sign and i'm our sign and i'm like oh my god i went to the swimming pool and walked by it today and watch people swimming and I'm going back to swimming. I love swimming at Mars and Pisces. Of course, I love swimming, super powered lap swimmer that I am. And I haven't done that for three years, thanks to the pandemic. So I'm looking forward to that. So all of us Aries folk are feeling like the urge to move our bodies, to get more fit, to be more, um, you know, on our game and whatever that means for you. Now, at the same time, the next best thing that we are going to experience, like just because everyone gets it, but we are going to really enjoy it, in my humble opinion, is that when, when Mercury goes into direct motion on June 3rd, and it is on the star algal, which I mentioned earlier, we could have some kind of critical moment regarding our home, our home life, where we live, our domestic life, where there's some kind of gritty tension that we may have experienced a little smidgen of it, you know, back in November with the, uh, with a, uh, an eclipse on algal, a solar eclipse. Lunar, there was an eclipse involving algal back in November. And there was also this eclipse that we just had as well. Um, so the vibe of algal has been seasoned November 19th. It's been seasoned again, uh, May the 
you know, it just, we just had the seasoning in May. And so in what way is there the May uh, 16th lunar eclipse? Think about those November, May times, where was there tension or some difficulty regarding your home? Something is going to break through here. It may come in a very um, exciting way because algo can, can be about wealth or it could also come in a very jar, jar, jarring way, but there's some change there in the home place. But the good news too is that then Mars will toddle along and get back into our favorite place, which is he moves back into the sign of uh, Gemini, his home sign. And that forward momentum throughout most of June is going to really open up some energy for us. In fact, let me for all signs check the date of that. Yeah, I thought so. So it is around June 14th that we see, and it's around the 18th, he's out of shadow. It's around June 14th, we see him moving back into Gemini. So for you, uh, Aries people, June 14th becomes an opening for you at the rest of June, where you can actually get a lot of momentum in things to do with trips or travel or selling and marketing or writing. Okay, things that you can do in that third house. This is where also by around June 5th, he becomes visible in the sky again. So you also get a bit of momentum there, but it's still to do with your fourth house of home. This is water. It only becomes more about your third house activities when you get past the 14th of the month. Okay. And last thing I'd say for you, because there's so much I could cover and I don't, I'm not going to do every single thing right here in this little mini tutorial, but I will say that the retrogradation of, um, Saturn, June the 4th, means that there's something turning around and going back over old ground to be deepened and rectified or cured or fixed or worked on or something like that to do in your sky with the Aquarius zone of your chart. And that happens to do with your social networks, your groups of friendships, your great gains from your career. Now, it's actually very good here because as he goes retrograde, he could bring allies and friends and supporters from your past into your life to bring you some support or help that you need in things to do with your dreams, your aspirations, your hopes, your wishes, and your career path. So you may find that out of the woodwork comes all this older support that maybe had fallen away for some reason or you could re-engage with a former group of belonging but with Saturn it's because you're getting back in touch with the head of that that group like you know um, if it was a church you're you're, go you're going to be the t pastors coming back to you or you're going back to the pastor or something like that or you know your yoga community and you find that your yoga teacher is reaching out to you or you reach out to them and you're back into the game of yoga anything like that but just know that this movement backwards through your 11th house is going to re-engage you through to October with social networks and groups that you may have let fall away or you haven't been a part of. So, you know, if you look at me, I gave my example of my sober sisters group. Maybe I'll go back in and be a sober sister again. We shall see. All righty. Um, and with that square to the nose and Neptune at the end of the month, whew, just watch out then for some disillusionment around the 27th of the month when Saturn is squaring, not in the nose, squaring um, Neptune. I apologize. And I don't know. To me, that could literally be. Um, oh, sorry. Saturn's not squaring Neptune. I apologize. Oh, my God, guys. I don't know about doing these longer videos. I apologize. Sorry. When Saturn, when the full moon in Sagittarius is squaring Neptune, in Pisces, <laughs> around the two weeks that follow the, the 14th of June's full moon in Sagittarius. Okay, you fiery people, this is happening in a trine to you. So this is not necessarily all of that difficult. It's not the worst thing you could get. However, Neptune in square to this moon is going to activate your for foreign lands and foreign travel 12th house, your spiritual awakening house, your deep self undoings, Neptune, the god of addiction. There could be a real turning point in the middle of June regarding some kind of uh, belief, some kind of travel, some kind of hope around travel, some kind of faith that you could be disillusioned with, or some kind of breakthrough with some kind of self doing, self uh, undoing addiction pattern or habit. Okay. Um, one of those, any of those are possible. All right, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign people, you guys are going to have the energy of, I'm going to talk about three or four things this month that I want to highlight, but you have the most auspicious, lovely energy of Venus, the Lord of your sign, 
co-present with your sun or moon or in the sign your rising sign existence that's rising sign is going to feel it the most obviously but hallelujah she's home in your sign and she's going to be there until around june 21st so she's there at the end of may you're going to feel like you're beautiful again you're going to start to feel um, i'm so pretty i'm so pretty or i'm so handsome and you're going to feel feel like more like in your own skin more more assured more popular more persuasive more charismatic more venus -y, you know more beautiful and you may find that this impels you or compels you or whatever to move toward beautifying yourself doing beauty treatments going to the spa getting your nails done if you're a woman choosing a new wardrobe maybe if you're a man just doing things getting a good barber shave or whatever just doing things that make you feel good about being yourself and being you in the skin of the venus energy now if you want to get something because you need to be coy per persuasive charismatic charming <laughs> and all that stuff with a little zest because venus is currently in her morning star condition which gives her a little bit more masculine oomph to be a go-getter this is really a good time for getting the thing you want so if you're a taurus you want to ask for a raise at work you should do it you want to get, get a favor from a friend but it's you think it's a long shot you may may as well ask this is the time where your ability to attract what you desire with venus in the house of you is strongest and it happens once a year but here we are it's here now so you know enjoy this and savor this time and in fact you have quite the stellium in the house of you as well during the month of june there's athena where you're gar garnering wisdom and knowledge and um, strategically planning your stories and there's mercury there as well until about um mercury will be in your sign until about I just did this for the other sign, June the, wow, my brain, June the something, <laughs> June the 14th, and that also supports you um, to be a very effective in your communication style, your communication skills, all that kind of thing. And, um, and when you get, you know, a kind of a Venus Mars combination, this is like the ideal mad men advertising, you know, killing it in the uh, sort of, what do you know, persuading, marketing, marketing, selling promotion energy because you know venus is like making things appealing and desirable to others and then mercury is like the gift of the gab to sell it or the gift of persuasion to sell it so around the fort till around the 14th this is your best ask period don't waste it as best my advice i could tell you you've got this and it will really serve you to take the long shots and go for it in terms of asking for what you want now and including to your lover your beloved or your partner um, okay, so the next thing is, is that I would say having this uh, Venus, I mean, this Mars transit through your natal uh, 12th house, normally I'd say that this is just, you know, a lot of internal battles, a lot of waging a war within yourself, or watching out for some hidden enemies like the male who might undo you. Um, but you do have Jupiter here this time. And with Jupiter's support, this is way more benefic. So what kinds of sort of inner warrior battles can be won by you with jupiter helping out co-present doing the the bidding of mars in your 12th house this can mean that mars will like likely try to bring you coaches guides mentors or teachers or instructors jupiter words or gurus even to really help you move away from some wounding and then on june the 14th mars will sit with chiron the wounded healer the place where you have a wound that needs to be fixed and you know jupiter's co-president in the sign so pay attention to around the 14th what's going on there because it's also the same time guys that mercury will station will move into your um second house of money earnings wages and possessions and so these themes seem to be co-present here in the middle of june you're healing some kind of self undoing at the same time mercury is moving into a place where he can really move your money faster through you more money coming to you the sun is shining in gemini as well uh, until about june the 22nd 20 21st or so this year and therefore you've got a lot of momentum in the money story from june 14th okay to let's say june the 20th this is definitely exciting times on your financial front you may also be able to purchase it something you always wanted like a better laptop a brand new bicycle a fancy car or whatever because marketing mercury mercury also likes to purchase things buy and sell in your money house and so the sun is shining there so it should be a good opportunity the 7th to the 14th to either bring in new money earnings increase or to buy something that you really want and know that you have the ability to get it especially with a sextile from jupiter to mercury in your second during the window of time the 14th to the 21st or so of the month of june 
okay, you're golden on the buying, selling and getting money if you need it kind of vibe. Anything else? Oh, yes. Okay. So I probably want to mention to you that, um, yeah, when Saturn goes retrograde on the 4th of June, and that lasts until October 23rd, but certainly it co covers the whole month of June. And this is starting off at 25 degrees of Aquarius. Well, in your sky, the idea of the Aquarian st story, you know, what does it mean? It's your career. It's your reputation. It's your status in the world. Um, some of you Tauruses may find that there is a need to go backwards in order to go forward, but it can make you way more focused and disciplined, I think, with less anxiety to achieve something uh, that you need to be responsible for in your career path, okay? So especially say if your rising sign Taurus is anywhere between, or sun or moon is between 20 and 29 degrees of the sign of Taurus, you're really going to dig in to fortify and strengthen some career aspect or goals or plans in your life. Lastly, you know, the square from the Sagittarius um, full moon in the middle, full moon in the middle of the month, my brain just went offline. Um, yes, it's going to be shining in your eighth house and your eighth house is a money house. Um, it's kind of like the bank loans, mortgages and um, credit card debts, maybe leveraging money, stock investment monies, business partnership monies. Now there's a full light there, but it's squaring deceptive Neptune with the sun in the second, creating a gritty T-square. Be careful around money, what looks too good to be true around a, a loan or a friend giving you some money or favors from groups or a group saying they're going to pledge some money to you. Yes, pledge or donate, Amber Heard. Which one is it? Uh, you really need to be careful because this may be, there's some, something you're not seeing and there's a high probability of some deception that could occur if you're not don't have your wits about you, Taurus, around those money types of money themes at that time. It could also be that you want to create a vision or a dream, uh, some kind of dream that involves groups of people, Neptune in the 11th, and you need to get that money. And there's a lot of gritty tension about getting that money on board that you're going to feel around that moon. That moon, by the way, that full Sagittarius moon is on June 14th. To the end of the month, this is kind of playing out as something. Um, I'll be doing a more in-depth full moon video during the month while I'll go into more detail with stars and asteroids. So stay tuned for that. Okay, we're moving on and we're going to do next. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign in your sky. You've got a beautiful energy going on of the Lord of your sky, Mercury, finally moving direct in the sign of you. And so for you guys, especially, you feel this very intensely. When Mercury moves into your sign, first of all, he moves direct, right? Around June 3rd, as he stations on fixed star Algol in the house of self undoing, addictions, hospitals, insane asylums, foreign lands and travel, and hidden enemies. So be careful around June 3rd. Don't go on a foreign land trip if you can avoid it. Duck your hidden enemies. Um, don't undo yourself. Okay. That's stuff that you should be watchful for Gemini's during the June 3rd, slowing, stationing, turning around version of Mercury. So three days before and after, but then um, on June the 14th, he enters into the sign of you, you, and this is going to feel good, right? Don't it feel good? You know, don't it feel good? And it's going to feel good because you're able now to be more communicative in a very effective way. You're going to feel more like yourself. You're going to feel like you can take some uh, chances and change your mind without having to worry about what people think. You're going to feel like you can be very good at marketing and merchandising and selling things and persuading people and speaking. So all of these things about you are amplified when Mercury is in the house of you. And this is so a wonderful time for you. So between the 14th and the end of the month, that's what he's doing. Um, He's kind of out of his shadow, I think, after the 18th. So I'd say between the 18th and the end of the month, you are on your Gemini game. Next of all, um, let's see, Saturn retrograding in your um, June 4th through to October 25th, but it starts this June at 25 Aquarius. This is something to do with going back over old ground to do with your beliefs, your faith, 
what you think the meaning of life is, the house of God, ninth house, or maybe may involve you in bu book publishing projects, going back over book publishing projects or work to do with that. And maybe going, uh, finding old spiritual teachers and guides coming back out of the woodwork and you reacquainting yourself. And um, maybe you could also find yourself wanting to establish something significant to do with a foreign land or foreign country. Now, the retrograde Saturn, um, if you have any plan, because he's stationing retrograde at 25 degrees of Aquarius, that's a hot spot in the sky. So should your rising sign be in the zone of 20 to 29 degrees, this is kind of picking up some of that intensity, you Geminis, or your sun or moon in those degrees. And so it really does impact you a lot more than other degrees, early degrees, is, early degrees of Gemini. Um, Saturn will only go back to 18 degrees, for example. He's going to really not travel too far backwards from that 25th degree before he goes forward again in the fall. Um, you might want to pay some attention to, why not anyway, um, what it's like when you have this um, moon in Sagittarius that's going to be full in your seventh house of marriage or significant relationships. And, you know, that will shine the light on your partner and or your business partner and you know they may be having a big bright moment in their lives or you just may be seeing them in a very full light so that's happening on june the 14th now even though it's happening on june the 14th two weeks after it will play out but watch with that square to neptune because it's possible there's some deception going on uh, and you may find that with neptune in the 10th house it could be this also could be about a business partnership and relative to your work life or career life um or, you know, your reputation is the 10th house and what kind of events going on in your partner's life give some kind of um, disillusionment vibe to how you are perceived by others. You know, could your partner do something that causes others to be more disillusioned in you? These are just ways of trying to suss out the sky. It's not one size fits all, of course, because I don't have your chart in front of me. You want to get the dream job and sign the contract, sun in the seventh house of legal agreements, but Neptune is up at the top of the sky and there may be a problem up there that you can't quite get your grip on. It's foggy. It's, it's hidden from your view. Maybe you want the job, but they, and they're going to hire in-house. Just an example. Lastly, you know, Venus is traveling through your 12th for the entirety till June 21st of the month almost. Um, this is a really good time to get a handle on your bedroom pleasures <laughs> in the ancient world that your 12th house is bed pleasures and venus is the goddess of sexuality so some of you gemini's may be finding your real true groove regarding how you enjoy your sexual life with venus there until the 21st of the month okay all right i'm going to grab a little bit more water and i'll be right back give me a sec pause the recording Hi, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign. Guess what? You're going to have Mars Angular. Yay, you. Mars will be in your 10th house, and it has not been there, remember, since June of 20 to December, well, until January of 21. How was that for you? Because this is rare that he's ever there that long. It may have revolutionized your career. You may have changed career direction. You may have dramatically reinvented your career path in some way, made significant career changes. Now he's back up there. There in the top of your sky this month. He started there May 24th, doesn't leave till July 5th. This is a lot of action in the career zone. And it's really good if you want to quit a job and you've been hesitating, you want to cut something out of the work life that you don't need, or you want to go with uh, more momentum, directionality, excitement, and passion into the current career path that you currently have. It allows you to take really effective action and you, in the light of what you want to call your purpose, your career ambitions, your success story. And Jupiter's up there helping. That's so great, right? Jupiter's up there being, you know, yes, Mars, what can I do for you? You know, and Jupiter being a, a benefic planet full of goodness. So yes, yeah, Santa Claus. So what could you get up here in terms of lucky breaks as well during this window of time when Mars is in the top of the sky supporting Jupiter? Watch for a little bit of a healing issue, a crisis or, uh, or something around the middle of June when uh, Mars and Chiron come together. But uh, sometimes Mars and Chiron can be uh, like finding a very strong mentor who's got a very military and energy, you know, uh, Chiron and Mars kind to get along um chiron was the mentor of the warriors of the ancient world um anything else i'd say about that no that's pretty well get ready for some gung-ho action set 
action set ready go in your career zone of your sky next of all you will find i think anyway that having venus this month going through your 11th house gives you a lot more fun if you've been feeling like you have been losing the enjoyment of your friendship circles and your more of your larger social life engagements you may find yourself being very sociable especially with the company of women especially with things to do with groups of groups that do things together and venus is bringing you a lot of pleasure and enjoyment at the top of that sky in your 11th house and so this is a very opportune window of time as well to have some money luck. Now, money luck isn't something you can make happen, but you know, I can say that a money goddess moving through a pennies from heaven house could bring you in the month of June some unexpected money breaks. And she doesn't, she's in up there until the 21st of the month. All right. And then she moves on to the next sign. So get ready for that as well. And um, there's a lot of action with Uranus of the North Node in the 11th house, which can mean exquisitely jol jarring and jolting and super exciting uh, money stories happening up there. You know what I mean? Like, OMG, you know, I never thought I'd see that happen. And of course it does happen and it's totally, totally jazzing you. Let me go back in my chart here and let's see when Venus crosses over again. I, I used to know the dates. Check my video for Venus through... Taurus all signs. I just put it out a couple of days ago. I think you'll really enjoy that more in depth look at this, but you know, it's really around um, Venus hitting that Uranus part of the sky really around the 10th of the month, 10th, 11th, 12th, where you could have some really big unexpected money bonus points on the game board of life. All right. So also cancer you, and you know, Venus is, um, you know, very benefic, right? She wants to bring good things to everybody. And she's in a sextile to your identity, which is the nature of Venus. So she really is trying to support you and flow uh, something really good to you. Uh, in especially, as I said, around the 10th of the month, especially if your sun, moon or rising cancer energy is between 15 and 25 degrees. Okay. Now let's talk about the full moon in Sagittarius, although I'll be going into more depth in my all signs video this month, but at 23 Sagittarius on June the 14th, it is squaring Neptune. Sagittarius is your sixth house of work and work routines. Now that can mean that and health and health protocols that make it mean you're shining a big flashlight of fruition and completion in some kind of work project project work activity co-worker space thing or some kind of health protocol that you're completing or finishing with or that you're also shining a, a moonlight to look at and find a new way to improve your health now un unfortunately there is a square uh to um neptune in the neptune in your house of faith and belief foreign tips and travel and stuff and what you're learning, if it's higher educational learning. Um, but Neptune's just sort of saying, you might have a disillusionment around something to do with the work or health protocol um, that you've been trying to engage in. Neptune rules things like hypnosis, by the way. So on a positive note, getting a hypnosis session might actually be a good thing because squares can bring breakthrough energy. So if you've never thought of trying hypnosis for your health, for instance, or reducing a, a health challenge, it may be actually a very good sky for that for a lot of the cancer rising, especially but sun and moon a little bit as well. With Saturn going retrograde on June the 4th to October 23rd, at starting at 25 Aquarius, he's retrograding in Aquarius for you. Uh, and that will slow down and make you go back to an old area of a focus to do with your loans and your bank loans and your mortgages and your investments and your, your investment structures, your spouse's money, business partner monies and stuff like that. Money that you can use it's shared resources and you inheritance money that you don't earn on a daily basis. So, you know, I think that Saturn going retrograde is good here. He's going to help you be more responsible. He's going to give you what you need to be disciplined and focused and perseverant regarding money strategies and money stuff. Um, so keep that in mind. I, I feel positive about it. It really impacts a lot of you. Um, uh, people, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about that really, forget it. So it just really is a good time for going back over your money stories and looking at them squarely and being sober minded about financial decisions. Mm. If you're trying to get into the occult, like doing tarot card readings or magical, mysterious things, Saturn might help you go back and ground yourself to a new level of mastery in some supernatural, woo, paranormal, mystical, occult, and magical tradition of some kind. <laughs> All righty. Anything else I want to say to you? Nope. Moving on to the next sign, and that will be Leo, of course. 
I was just thinking about this. I'm doing this sky reader course and I'm doing a little video about all each of the signs on the ascendant. And when Leo is on the ascendant, I swear it's like vain about your mane. You know, that's my little code word for that. Like I've never met a Leo rising or someone with this, um, a, a son in the first house, Leo, who does not have an absolute fascination with their own hair. <laughs> All righty. I met, I met an astrologer woman at a conference a couple of years ago and I said, are you a Leo? She had like this huge man. She goes, no, but I'm a Leo moon. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Let's keep going. Um, so Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. Um, so for you guys, the energy, I'm going to talk first of all, I think I'm going to talk first about Mars here because Mars is a uh, gung-ho dynamic duo and uh, duo with Jupiter in your um, ninth house. But because he meets up with Chiron in the middle of the month, pay attention to the possibility in the month of June of healing some kind of wound about the trust in the universe, that God has your back, that there is a div divine order to things. You may heal something there. And you may even bring in a guide or a mentor to help you heal a wound regarding your faith in life. As well, Leo, you may find that traveling to other countries becomes an opportunity that you're aware of in the, this month of June because of Mars loves to travel, Jupiter loves uh, to expand things, and this is a foreign lands house. Jupiter will help you prevail in legal matters if you need to, and uh, when I do my Johnny Depp and Amber Heard video, I'm pretty sure Johnny Depp will win because of a Jupiter activation with his ninth house. Um, but for you guys here, you know, you're looking at this as your time to win something in a legal court situation if you need to, Leo. So right, if that's a priority, Mars is the battle warrior lawyer, and Jupiter is the benevolent judge, and Chiron is healing a legal situation, and it will should fall out as a positive thing by the end of June or early into the the first week of June, July, when Mars is there till July 5th. And, um, and there's adventure to be had in foreign lands. If you want to travel, this is a really good all the way through to July 5th to go for some really big travel adventures. Now, next of all, you know, the Venus movement through your fifth house through June until the 21st is going to bring you great recognition in your career around promotions, around being popular, around people liking you or some woman in your career elevating you because this is Venus in her dignity. It is a little bit like getting the golden touch, the Midas touch, but it's the female Midas touch in your career zone. This is certainly a good time, Leos, to ask for that raise or promotion if you think you're qualified to get it but it's also to know that you have so much support up in the top of the sky especially when venus will collide with the nodes i think that's around the um 10th and 11th and 12th of june uh she collides with uranus and then later on 13th uh, 10th 11th 12th 13 14 15 16 17th that time of june there's some breakthrough excitement in your career path you could have an unexpected si sudden job promotion offer uh new direction um exhilarating expansion it's just really good for your career okay and uh, so I'm really happy for you guys. Uh, you do have this um, energy of Saturn retrograding June 4th, to October 24th, 3rd. And he's starting his retrograde at 25 Aquarius, making you go back over old ground in your marriage partnerships or significant committed love relationships or business partnerships. You may have to go back and redevelop some kind of solid ground there. I mean, you've got Saturn there since 2000 and December 2000, and he doesn't leave until March of 23. If your relationship is on an unstable foundation saturn will try to build a stronger one but he's just as happy to use the grim reaper side of his character and quit, quit the marriage so have you quit it or your husband quit you or your wife quit you or your significant other quit you vice versa the finish line so you know this is a longer story but right now during this retrograde starting in june 4th you're going to find that you're going to go back and look at your relationship with a serious, sober-minded, realistic gaze. You're going to be very practical and you're going to be willing to be disciplined and, and, and all of that, but maybe with less anxiety and worry um, than you had when Saturn was going direct. Um, anything else? If you have a marketplace that you're sort of selling things to from your career path, similar storyline, going back and being more dutiful and responsible, perseverant, realistic about the way you are providing these things to the world. <sighs> Anything else? Um, the full moon in Sagittarius is on June 14th, squaring Neptune. And Sagittarius is in your fifth house of children, sexuality, pregnancy, 
be careful full moons in people's fifth house can lead to unexpected pregnancy especially in a sag fifth house because it's jupiter ruled and jupiter is able to fire trine your fifth house of fertility from the ninth house and by the way in vedic astrology the ninth house is the house of childbirth and the actual uh, pregnancy itself so for a woman so basically you've got a really hot setup leos for getting pregnant so if you want to be pregnant then yay full moon could offer the opportunity if you don't be cautious so you know the 14th add two weeks be careful but this is also good for romance for full sexual uh expression for more fun and play in your life it's that square to neptune that's a little dicey so unfortunately if it's about a lover neptune in the eighth house is to betrayals and secrets um infidelities and stuff like that and you know taboo topics so what, what would be hidden from your view what will you not see clearly what is all foggy for you you're like this person looks really great but then you get down with them and you find out they're married and they got three kids but they didn't tell you so be cautious on those themes as well you don't need to get into a toxic secret love affair if you can avoid it um anything else i want to tell you nope that's about it i think that's about it hmm. if you're a leo who has an independent business enterprise does her own thing business business you know like me in, in entrepreneurial energy this is a similar story be careful you don't get money and financing neptune in the eighth from some kind of source, a loan, a bank loan, a business loan that isn't reliable, fogged up vision, Neptune, to support some entrepreneurial endeavor that you wish to bring to fullness, okay, from something you may have started six months earlier, okay, so keep that in mind as well. Just be careful on financing and make sure you understand what the real deal is. Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign. So you've got a frigging lovely time here with, okay, I think I'm going to start with Mercury, your Lord, finally going direct. <laughs> Yay! So direct on June 3rd under the light of Algol in Taurus. So that's a little gnarly as he stations direct on June 3rd. Mm, that's going to be a bit of a off with her head Algol moment in the Vedic house of the father, in the house of religion and patriarchal figures, in the house of higher education. You may have a bit of a... Um, unfortunate like um feeling around that part of your sky it's possibly like revealing to you something that you didn't really want to see either um it's the energy it's reactivating the lunar eclipse that happened in scorpio with the sun sitting in algal in your ninth house and um there's always a feeling here in that ninth house that some of this could be very internal it's one of those in between the world's houses so maybe you're having spiritual breakthroughs here as well as mercury goes direct on algal in taurus or educational developments or news or things about your father coming to light etc maybe even a health challenge for your dad who knows hygiene of the goddess of healing and sickness and wellness is involved in mid-june in scorpio across the way from algal in your own story of your mark of your mercury going direct finally on the you know and moving uh finally on the 14th of june to the rest of the month into your 10th house this is definitely a great time for you to get your way in your work story do you want a promotion do you need a raise do you want to change your job do you want to have two jobs gemini right uh, the twins do you need to get two jobs but whatever is going on there mercury is going to show you the way mid-june onward and maybe two jobs is what you need virgo rising also you could make great contracts negotiations deals let's make a deal in the workplace with the, your superiors or authorities figures or people in power uh, new contracts can be formed new terms of service or agreements can be formed in your work that really support you you got the sun shining up there as well so that's also very positive so our budget let's say between the 18th and we're at a shadow period and the 20th is pretty well a sweet spot in your career path virgo next of all you do have the energy of a full moon in sagittarius that's going to show oh, let me go to saturn retrograde saturn will retrograde in aquarius um, between the june 4th and october 23rd and his retrogradation is going to activate the part of your chart that represents your job and your workplace and your colleagues and it can also represent the way you deal with your health challenges or your you know ways to be healthy for you, uh, Virgo, this is clearly going to be a chance because it's a workhouse to strengthen your habits and routines and perseverance and discipline around the things you do for work or maybe working out things you do for your health. Um, less anxiety and more, I think, featured focused uh, 
perseverant, responsible, masterful energy is happening here. You could find an authority figure in a health field is going to support you in your health when Mercury goes, Saturn goes retrograde or an old colleague or coworker or boss, uh, authority figure comes back as well. These would be people you've met before and they're returning to your forefront. Last but not least is a Sagittarius story of the full moon in Sag in the middle of the month on the 14th of the month. That full moon will shine a big bright light in the part of your sky that is all that fiery part of your sky that is really all about your home. So your home life, where you live, your private life, the shelter under which you live, like your condo, your apartment, etc. cetera. Um, and there's a square to Neptune as it, and that's the house of your significant other, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, et cetera, or a business partner. So there could be something about deception or illusion or not seeing clearly something to do with what your partner's up to relative to things that should be happening in the domestic life or private life. But also because legal contracts is your seventh house and you need, if you want to buy or sell a home or sign a new lease or a new contract, there could be some illusion or delusion or deception or something you're not seeing clearly in the seventh house. So be cautious if you are a Virgo around signing documents in particular that have to do with land, home, and real estate during the four. 14th uh, add two weeks that full moon uh, may not give you the full picture and you just want to be a little bit cautious about that okay and definitely get an extra set of eyes on something get some legal eagle eyes on something mm -hmm. in that regard um and lastly, you know, if you had a partner uh, that was going to move in with you, like, and you've been talking about it forever, this person may back down on you. There's a square to Neptune deception in the house of partners. And there could be a feeling like they were leading you on and they don't really want to have a co-shared home or something goes down, down the tubes like that uh, in this window of disillusionment that can follow the full moon and the two weeks that follow. Libra sun, moon, and rising sign. I had the weirdest sleep. So, sorry, guys, my shoulder needs to be like fixed. And I slept on it weird. And so Libra sun, sun moon, rising people. <laughs> Let's start off with talking about Saturn retrograde for you because Saturn is exalted in your home sign. So he has a special affinity for you, Libras, right? You, get, you know, when he's in Libra, Venus's house, he gets the VIP treatment. And when he retrogrades, there's probably something in it for you that's beyond most people. He's in your fifth house when he retrogrades. And that is a very important house about, well, Vedic astrology, it has to do with your, um, it's one of the Dracona houses, but it has to do with your vitality, your life force, your ability to create and to manifest as well. And it shows you what do you love, right? And, you know, with your case of Saturn retrograding here and trining your first house, the real question is, what do you love? And you're maybe asking yourself that between, you know, and, you know, he's at home in his dignity here. So he's really digging into this question to be authoritatively clear about what brings you joy in life, what makes you excited and happy. So you start to ponder that maybe June 4th to the 23rd. Um, old lovers from the past can come back, if, especially if they're older than you. But you can also be going back to find new hobbies and games and fun things to do that you used to do and wanting to master that new that skill or that game or that hobby or that talent. Oh, things like that can happen for you, Libra risings in this, this condition. Your children can feel like a burden, but now that um, Saturn's retrograding, it may not be so much of an emotional burden, but more like a practical burden. And you may just have to realize that as a Libra rising sun or moon, that it's time to it's like, you know, be more stern with the kids, maybe be more of a, a, an effective authority figure. All right, moving on to other elements in the sky, we do have Mars in your seventh house of marriage. Now, you know, if you want to go back and think about what happened in your significant marriage relationship, business partnership house in, you know, June of 2020 to January of 21, that was an extended stay, that very rare extended stay of Mars in your seventh house. This is a smaller six week version and it started May 24th and ends July 5th, but you're gonna get the whole month of May with Mars moving in forward motion through the marriage house. It can mean your partner's really aggressive, combative, conflictual, argumentative. You may find them to be gnarly. And you may find your business partner or other people like clients to be similarly inclined. Pay attention to the middle of the month when um, Mars will be with Chiron. I think that's around the 14th. And there's maybe a wound that needs to be addressed regarding a business or love partnership that you're going to face head on. Okay. Like, and, or your partner will face head on and it'll be right in the story. 
good news is Jupiter is there in your seventh house trying to smooth it out, iron out the details, iron out the wrinkles to bonify the situation. So it's not as bad as it seems, okay? But, you know, Jupiter will try his best to bring some kind of silver lining to any conflicts in your significant relationships. If you need to sign legal documents, Jupiter is the legal legal guy. Uh, and Mercury, uh, and, and that's really good. Um, and w- but wait till Mercury goes direct, of course, because uh, then contracts and agreements uh, after June third, and even better after June fourteenth, when Mercury's back in Gemini, go very well. In fact, in your case, legal agreements and contracts, Libra rising, Sun and Moon. Please avoid them if you can. Uh, please do uh, signing anything if you can until june 14th when mercury is in the ninth house sextiling jupiter in your seventh house and that will be much more auspicious venus moving through your eighth house is good for your money you're going to definitely find you get some perks here you might get all kinds of weird ways that money comes to you that you didn't expect including people paying you back from old loans um some kind of credit card terms that are insanely good some kind of mortgage terms that are insanely good some kind of grant that you apply for that you get just money coming from other people is landing your way as Venus will be in in June till the 21st moving direct motion through your eighth house pay attention to June 10th a couple days on either side you could have a jolt of unexpected money excitement check my Venus video for a lot more details on that okay um, I just put it out a couple of days earlier Venus in uh Taurus through all the signs I you'll have a lot more detail than this next of all um I would mention the full moon for sure is happening for you guys in your Sag corridor of your trips and travel. And you may be wanting to bring some full completion or fruitfulness to journeys and travel, online learning, skills-based learning, teaching, instructing, guiding, and all that stuff. Siblings as well. If you're Libra rising, this could mean this is an opportunity, especially for you rising signs to, um, find a journey that's going to be very mystical or magical, but be cautious for deception as well. You may take a trip that's going to be about a work trip or aligned or or coordinated with something to do with your work or your health. And yet you might also find there may be some things that you didn't see before going into the planning or the taking of this trip that may be a little bit like, oh, uh, you know, the little disillusionment or a little not seeing something clearly until you see it. <laughs> Keep that in mind. And that applies to June 14th at two weeks. Okay. Scorpio, sun, moon, rising sign. Energetically, this is a very, very interesting time for you because you're going through a south node eclipse cycle and it's really helping you divest of your identity and re- recreate yourself. It's not an easy cycle that you're in. It's just very intense and a lot of focus on your marriage partnerships and stuff. And the reason I'm bringing that up in the context of this story now and talking about it is that the the eclipse on May 16th activated Algol from the house of you. I mean, you know, there was a full moon in your house on May 16th and Algol across the way in the marriage house. So be cautious here because there is the condition where Venus is, you know, well, first of all, there is the condition where Mercury will station to turn um, direct on the star of Algol where you've already got a hot spot. And so there could be some turnaround, but also difficulty with your marriage partner, your significant other, your business partner. It may feel really intense, like off with their heads or something like that. And then way down the pipeline later in the month, you know, around, oh, let's say um, the 19th and 20th, Venus will be going over Algol as well which is interesting because that's where Johnny Depp and Amber Heard both have their Venus at 26 degrees of Taurus. And like, you know, you can see that in the toxicity of this trial. So you want to watch out for toxic love stories playing out in your life in, let's say, June 18th to the 21st. You know, Venus will leave your seventh house on the 21st. Mercury will go direct, as I said, on Algol. So watch for conflict on the June 3rd and more intensity around you know, June 18th to 21st with your, your significant other. But then finally, Mercury is in Gemini, which is good for your money. And that's going to be a lovely direct motion Mercury. <laughs> Yay, you. Uh, starting on the 14th of the month through the rest of the month and really applying some significant positive energy towards business negotiations and deals to do with other people's money, stock market money, investment money, loans and signing documents like loans and mortgages are all very sanctioned for you. 
sign on those dotted lines and they look very money auspiciousness, especially before the 21st while well, the sun is still shining in your eighth house and Mercury is moving in direct motion. So the 14th, to the 21st or so of the month, really good for money stuff for you. You could get news of money coming to you from an inheritance or a bequeathment. Not everyone will have that Scorpio, but you're one of the ones that could have something like that happen in that window of time. Saturn retrograding in Aquarius, starting on June 4th to October 23rd, especially if your Scorpio rising is between 20 and 29 degrees, is going to impact you in the area of your sky that relates to, drum roll please, your home and your real estate and your home life. Because you get a lot of action with Mercury in the mortgage houses, uh, bank loans and stuff like that, credit card debts as well. And now you've got this uh, full moon on October, uh, June the no, it means Mercury, sorry, Saturn going retrograde here. You could go back over some financial dealings to do with leases and selling and buying of homes. Something's coming back from the past, another opportunity or another direction that you've seen before, but it's regenerating itself in a new form as Saturn goes back. And Saturn going backward to me is less malevolent and more benefic. Okay, I'm just going to say it, whether no, any other astrologer thinks that or not. I think it's putting him off his game in terms of his intensity as a malefic. And I think for you, this is definitely going to look like a positive real estate opportunity or re-opportunity, re something from the past that's gone dead in the water coming back back to you and you're able to pull it off and get something to go forward financially regarding real estate last but not least on the stories of full moon oh yeah you in the sign of sagittarius it's about the money honey there's a big bright light in your second house of earnings but watch for that square to neptune in the house of independent business enterprise and romance and enjoyment and pleasure and play um it's really tricky to make sense of that one but you know it, Money luck is the fifth house. If something seems too good to be true, speculation, uh, risky investment uh, opportunity uh, coming at you sometime full light uh, in the earnings house, maybe double check. Okay. Someone says, hey, this is a great opportunity to buy this dead in the water altcoin. It's going to come back. Well, maybe not. <laughs> so try not to do any risky money speculations or investment money stuff around June 14th to the end of the month. I would hesitate myself if I was you. Wait it out. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. Well, the light of your day here is that the big news is Mars, a fire guy, trining you as it goes through Aries. You had a big fire trine from Mars as he went through your fifth house back in June of 2020, and it lasted till the end of that year. But here we are again. And now this is six weeks only, but who cares? It's really good for you, really vitalizes you. So, like May the 24th through to the July 5th, you got like a lot of spark of vitality, enthusiasm, and joy, and joy meant coming at you from Mars in the fifth house and radiating toward you, all right, loving you up in your house of your identity and your body. So you might find a new sport, a new endeavor, a new hobby, a new game you love to play, and Mars is making you have more fun, and, you're, and you might be more sexually active, and you might be having passionate romance here. This is really, really good stuff. And you do have a, a bit of a wound here, ouch, around the 14th with Chiron. Do you have to heal a love affair, heal a relationship with a child, with your children in your fifth house? Do you have to heal something to do with your, um, your what brings you joy and enthusiasm and just face the mirror of truth? No, I hate this thing. I'm going to move away. Yes, I love this thing. Because the fifth house is asking you, what do you love? And you're going to find out because you got Mars action packing through there. And Jupiter, who works for Mars here because Jupiter's in his house, saying, and let's make it bigger. Like, so is it romance? It's big romance. Is it sex? It's big sex. Is it that new sport you love? It's so damn amazing. It's really expanding you. You're feeling joy, joyful, 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 optimistic, filled with hope here. Okay. <laughs> so yay, Sagittarius. This is so wonderful. I mean, this is just like, yay. Okay. I'm, I'm happy for you. The other thing I'd say is that with that big full moon in the sign of you, which is going to light you up a bit, um, you might find that normally a full moon is bringing you a sense of completion or fullness or fruitfulness around something that you are wanting to have accomplished or achieved or focused on in your life. And normally I would be all like, yay, you, how wonderful. However, at this time there is at like gnarly square and that's happening on June 
um, 14th, add two weeks to Neptune in the fourth house. You may have some confusion about something in your home. Someone you live with may be confusing or deceiving you. Something to do with your home life may be pretty darn gnarly, or you may have an illusion that you have to dispel to do with your family of origin. Because, you know, things your mom and dad taught you, the way you believe life works, uh, faith and beliefs around you know, how reality is structured. Um, things to do with your mother, disillusionment in your mother, really a hard one to, you know, I do know a Sag is going on a cruise with his mom in June. So some kind of disillusionment with the mom or some kind of spell being broken uh, there of some sort. Um, yeah, that's about all I can say about that. Be careful for real estate deals because it may have some shady dealings there as well for you at that time. Um, next of all, uh, Saturn will retrograde in Aquarius starting on June 4th to October 23rd. This is around 25 Aquarius and in your sky, that's going to be a third house trips and travel thing, especially if you're a rising sign, sun or moon in Sag is between 20 and 29 degrees of Sag. I'll really get a lot of juice from this retrogradation really. And uh, as he turns around on June 4th, where were you going to, where are you going to go back to that you've been before old ground, old stomping grounds, traveling to a place you've been before. You can't make this stuff up. The Sag guy with his mom is going to on a cruise that he's done before. Um, where would you find a Saturn going backwards could help you get back in touch with a sibling, a cousin, a nephew, an aunt, an uncle to make something happen, to ground it in reality, to bring some kind of new rules or agreements or structures to those relationships. If you want to learn something, you'll go back and learn something and you want to be masterful at it, but it's skills-based learning, something you can really use, like how to sell a house, how to like build a, a fort or something. I don't know how to do something. Um, yeah. Hmm. Anything else? Did I cover all the grounds for you? Well, Venus is definitely the first three weeks of June. She's continuing her journey as she is happy to be doing in her zone of influence, her Taurus part of the real estate of your sky. That's good for you because this brings some really positive health developments, health and wellness improvements. You may also feel like your work is more fun and you're enjoying your colleagues more. And maybe there's a particular female workmate or colleague that you're particularly enjoying making your work life in the first three weeks of June a heck of a lot more more pleasurable. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. Now, Capricorn, it's been a long haul for you with Pluto since 2008, going through your first house. I always feel for you on that regard. I'm Aquarius. I get it next. A lot of self transformation going on here. And I would say that one of the things you need to look out for here in this current sky um, that I think is worth highlighting is probably uh, I'm having a hard time picking. Let's pick Mars because Mars exalts you, right? When Mars is in Capricorn, Sat's a house, the house of Saturn. Saturn gives them like total love, right? VIP treatment. And so there's a feeling that um, the Lord of your sky wants to please Mars, right? That's kind of the, the code here. So with Mars exalting Capricorn, he's a planet you need to pay attention to a little bit. And his movement through your fourth house is a double-edged sword, so to speak, because Mars is also the god of cutting and, and breaking and severing and ending things. And he's going through your fourth house. You may find some domestic situation coming to a completion or an ending. You know, Mars is very, very fiery here. And I don't know if you felt any of that energy between um, June of 20 and uh, January 21, but it's back again for six weeks instead of six months. And, you know, conflicts in the home, fighting in the home, people fighting in your home, the kids fighting, your roommates fighting, people are, are armed, armed and armed and ready for battle. So it's not easy. And there's a woundedness coming around the middle of the month on the 14th as Mars will um, run into Chiron, you might find an acute wound, a real sharp, ouchy spot, um, a battle words or battles are really intense fight in the home around that time that really exposes something fundamental here. And it's a deeper wound than the surface. You'll maybe have to look at it. Now, it is a family of origin, ancestral line, house of the mother. It may be you're battling with your own childhood demons for all I know, but there's definitely a lot of things that could happen. Mars can do construction and projects and getting things done and building things in the house. And Jupiter's here to expand your home. So that could be a construction project, a home expansion project, or moving to a bigger home or trying to find a bigger home. Those are all possible possibilities for you guys as well during the month of, of June with Mars in your fourth house. Now you also could look at this as new directions regarding your home. I don't know what that means, but just keep that in mind. Like I'm going to 
I was looking for a condo, but now I want a house, you know, changing direction and something like that. I wanted to move to Siberia. Now I want to move to California. <laughs> um, alrighty. And with Taurus, Venus action uh, going in your sky through your romance house, this can bring you a lot more pleasure or fun with your children, uh, more ease and play with your children, more fun and pleasure with your romance and sexual partner. You might just feel more joy and more inspired and very creative when Venus is going through your fifth house. If you've been putting off hearing the muse, she's definitely talking to you during the first three weeks of the month of June. And it's a very pleasurable transit to have her there. You might overindulge in <clears throat> too much wine, too much fun, too much good food, but you're at least you're having some fun. Um, there's a bit of tension and excitement at the same time around June the 10th when Venus will collide with Uranus and also the North Node. It's quite explosive if you're a single Capricorn this could be an explosive new beginning of an incredibly dramatic love story but check out my all signs Venus and Taurus all signs video for a lot more detail Capricorn it's out a couple of days ago so just look in my channel and you'll be able to see it as a recently published video I would also think that if you have any kind of um romantic discomfort <laughs> or something not going well so far in your romance life Venus here is really trying to fix the problem let's put it that way okay Just fix your sexual problem fix your romantic problem trying to help you find solutions because she's bonifying or making things happy there and what else do I want to tell you? Mercury will retrograde, of course, um, stationing on Algol on June the 3rd to turn around into direct motion. Now, it's a bit of a dicey spot for your marriage, I mean, your romance house, just for you caps, okay? This is very important to so, so really listen to this, you know, because Algol, right, is around 26 degrees, 25 to 6 degrees, 27 degrees of Taurus. And what is happening is that Mercury is on that star that was seasoned on the May 16th lunar eclipse. That's where the sun sat around May the 16th, okay? And there was another eclipse in November. It also activated Algol on November 19th. So this has been a hot spot in your romance part of your sky, your children and romance, those people, love partners, romantic partners, children. And when you see this happening here, this mercury barreling and burning into Algol and turning around, and then you add to that, all right? That later in the month, really around the 18th, 19th, and 20th, Venus crosses over that same place that Mercury sat on. There's definitely some kind of energy here that could mean a dramatic and sudden declarative outburst, breakup, or falling apart or off with their heads of a marriage, of a romantic relationship. I say marriage because, you know, it depends. If you think your marriage partner is your, you know, your love partner, you're like romantically love, in love with them, then that's going to be that energy. If you think your marriage partner is your comrade, your, your housemate, then that's probably not the same. But I'm just saying there's this energy in the fifth house. It's really intense. It's really intense. Do not speculate on risky investments, speculative investment money stuff. Don't take financial risks during the month of June when this is all happening either. Not with that algal star getting involved. Just don't take a fi big financial risk. Okay, Capricorn? I'm going to say that. Uh, then Mercury will go through your sixth house of work and health routines. And that's going to be really lovely starting on the 14th of the month through to the end of the month. And with the sun there until the 21st, certainly between the 14th and the 21st, you may get some good news in your workspace, or you may hear some good information or news coming through the workplace for you that really supports you or some things in your health protocols and routines and good information and news to really pick that part of your sky up. And you may sign a new contract, a document or a legal agreement, and you may even be able to pay off a debt that you didn't think you're going to be able to pay off. And that's going to happen between uh, around, as I said, the 14th and the 21st of June. Did I cover everything for you? I think I forgot Saturn. Did I do Saturn? Saturn retrogrades in your between June 4th and October 3rd in your earnings house. You're going to go back words in your earnings. Sometimes that means like two steps back, one step back, two steps forward. You know, maybe you have to go back over old ground. Maybe you have to repair something. Maybe you have to be more disciplined around your earning structures, your possessions, um, things like that. And, you know, you're kind of sober-minded, sobering up in how you, what you eat, 
you know, what goes in your mouth, your food style. And Saturn will say, you have to be more serious and sober-minded and disciplined about what you eat and what you drink, as well as he may be saying, and how you spend your money and how you make your money and how you organize your resources. Okay. And that's playing out until October, but it starts up this June the 4th. Aquarius, sun, moon, rising sign. I hope I'm recording. Otherwise, I'll just shoot myself. Thank God. Okay. Just sometimes I forget. Am I still recording? Oh, all right. Okay, Aquarians. Obviously, the big news is Saturn retrograding in our first house, the house of us. Huh. If your rising sign, sun, or moon, let's say, is between, let's go with uh, 18, let's go 17 to 29 degrees of Aquarius because this is a zone he retrogrades to 18 degrees. I'm really feeling this retrogradation. Um, my ascendance at 16. So I'll say like 16 to 29. I think we're going to really feel this retrograde ret ret retrogradation. Um, I find that, as I said, like the pandemic ebbed, you know, when he retrogrades or all the rules started to fall away. But I also find things like when I joined Sober Sisters, you know, because I'm Aquarius rising, that I was really, really disciplined in my sobriety. And I'm not even an alcoholic. I just want to be not a gray zone drinker so i find that that could be very good for me then for instance june 4th saturn retrograding to be really serious about it in fact i'm doing something for myself called my sober summer boot camp uh, for june july and august and i'm starting on june 4th it's like literally what i'm doing so it has to do with a friend visiting and i want that friend to leave first so i don't have any temptation to go to find dinners when that person's visiting me and drink some wine so where in your life will you aquarians want to get really simply sober minded, realistic, perseverant, disciplined without anxiety and fear. Where are you going to be able to double down on something and really feel like you've got it? You've got it. You've got this. He's the Lord of your house. He's the Lord of your sun or your moon. This is important for you, especially you rising sign people. And of course, we're having Saturn in our first house, right? This is a big deal. This happens only every 30 years. We're getting very sage-like and wise, and this doesn't complete until March of 23. And it started in December of 20. Now, if you are somebody as well, you know, who is um, wanting to establish something new in your life or to build some new foundation for something, your work, your home, your relationships, it doesn't matter. Saturn is a foundation builder and he makes the, the dreams real. So this is a time for you to concretize and make things real and tangible and successful in your life. This is an ally. Saturn is our ally. He's here to help us. He's not here to taskmaster us. He's here to support us, to give us the backbone, stamina, and focus and discipline we need to succeed. So lean into Saturn during this retrograde till October 23rd. Next of all, I think that what we're really getting a really nice juicy bit going on here is certainly Venus, okay, moving through Taurus, because this is her home. And she's until the 21st of June in our fourth house. I mean, I'm probably going to plant plants and maybe a little garden on my deck and get some new furniture for the deck. But so we'll meet beautify our home. If we want to move, however, we'll, we'll find a new home that's even more beautiful. Pay attention to June 10th and 11th and watch my Venus through all the signs, because around that time, there could be a sudden, exciting, exhilarating change of home an opportunity for a new home some kind of great big bolt of juice regarding new home okay um and it's going to be very positive and then later on in the month as venus around um the 20 no the 18th 19th and 20th will cross over algal now this is a little complicated but that's where a lot of eclipse energy has been happening this can be a dramatic uh, energy where there's a definitive moment it could come through an upset you know like i said in my last video for venus like a, the landlord says she's selling the house or something but it's okay it's working in your favor because venus is a benefic and she's in her house angular house and it's all good it's all good um with mercury retrograding until June 3rd, right? First three days. And he turns around on Al Gol. Also pay attention to June 3rd in your home life. Uh, add a few days on either side. What is this gnarly energy regarding things to do with your home? Like what is there like, are they, is there a gas leak and the buildings closed down? Is, do they find that there's lice and mice in your, in your property? What's going on here that really is disturbing to the piece? You know what I mean? Um, but then when Mercury goes direct um, around and then he's then it gets which he does that but then he's in gemini starting on the 14th this is excellent so 14th of june 
in the last two weeks of the month, he's moving in direct motion through your romance house, your fun and your pleasure, your house of your children, the house of your independent business enterprise and great for marketing, merchandising and selling and speaking and communicating things that you want to sell. You're also maybe feeling totally enlivened here because you might be messaging back and forth or emailing or phone calling or talking a lot with some romantic love interest that's really taking off for you in the last two weeks of June. Now, it's exciting, but it's also really good between June 14th and the 21st when you also still have the sun in your fifth house. And if you want to buy a lottery ticket and you are a Aquarius rising or you want to like, place a bet on, you know, go to the casino, or place a bet on something. This is not a bad plan. Um, you know, Mercury uh, here. And with the sun here too, this is a window of time where you have a bit of speculation luck or winning luck in gaming ways. Okay. And what else? The full moon in Sagittarius will be shining a big, let's talk about Mars. Mars is moving through your third house uh, from the entirety of the month, May 24th to July 5th. So all of June, direct motion Mars, pay attention to around the 14th when he bumps into Chiron. <clears throat> what wound with a sibling, aunt, uncle, or cousin? What wound about short trips and travel are you confronting around the 14th of the month? This is also what wound could you be encountering with a childhood friend or somebody you've known since elementary school? And, um, or what wound in something you're trying to learn are you bumping into? Like frustration maybe because it's like oh my god I can't get this and Chiron is, is the woundedness around learning something on the 14th and feeling like you're tripped up maybe however Jupiter's here to solve it that's the good news Jupiter will make sure that the sibling dispute or the learning stall or the trip delay or something or whatever's going on or whatever this thing is that Mars is doing fixes itself. Now, <clears throat> Mars is going to make us travel here. So a lot of us will be traveling between those dates. And I will be traveling for the few days in the beginning of June as well. So it all works out like it's so true. The sky is so true. I don't travel anywhere, but this friend's visiting from Ontario and we're traveling on a ferry to go visit another part of British Columbia. Um, full moon is shining in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the quarter of the sky that represents your hopes, wishes, and dreams. Your fairy godfathers uh, and mothers live up there. It's a house of good spirit. It can bring some great financial gains in from your career path. And, but, and I'll get to that. And it can also mean that you're going to have a new social alliances or groups or a fullness there, like, you know, culminating energy could be ending. Sometimes full moons are endings. What group of belonging do you no longer need to affiliate with? And with a square to Neptune, in the second house because it's no good for your finances have you been a part of some social movement social group social alliance or friendship circle and that full moon is shining a gnarly gnarly square to neptune in the money house and you're going oh my god like this is not good for my finances or i'm not making any money in this group or this is like a dead end and you may back out all right now it's likely something that you've already been involved in for six months, okay? Because there was a new moon back in the same space a while ago, six months ago. So don't look at it like, oh yeah, that, you know, that community I joined two weeks ago is going to be a dud. No, no, no. It's something you planted a long time ago and you're just kind of getting done with it, you know, like that, that vibration. All right. Anything else I need to say to you? To us, to us Aquariuses. Nope. I think that's it. Covered it all. Last but not least are the Pisces folk, Pisces sun, moon, rising sign folk. You are having an incredible experience here of some money momentum, Mars in your money house for six freaking weeks. Yeah. So this is May 24th um, to July 5th. Now you could just have more direction, action, more focus, more drive, more ambition, more passion towards the idea of increasing your possessions and earnings. So this is like in getting you on your game. And Jupiter here is saying, I, I, I hereby bring blessings to this area of the sky that Mars is busily working. And so I hereby give you some lucky breaks financially around getting more money, resources, and earnings in your story. Mars says, cut it out, man. You don't need that gluten. You don't need that thing. Mars will help you eliminate things you should not ingest, drink, eat, put in your mouth because he's an elimination diet god when he goes through the second. So some of you Pisces will change your diet. Now, around the 14th of the month, he bumps into Chiron. You could have a dietary wound. You could have a bit of a financial sting at that moment. You'll heal something about your self-worth, your self-values, your self, you know, accountability for your own voice in the world that brings you your vocation and your earnings. You're going to squarely face a challenge and you're going to overcome it because Jupiter's supporting you to overcome a challenge in mid-June regarding money and earnings. I'll give you an example. It's not pro probably true, but a clawback, you know, a client wants their money back. Do you go, oh my God, no. And you go to battle. No, 
you don't, you give it, customers always right. As my dad used to say, you give them their money back, uh, but you don't take it personally. So you're going to heal things to do with money wounds, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, and some of these are from childhood and Vedic astrology. Your second house is your house, or your family of origin and your intimate childhood family uh, in that sense. So some of these could be childhood wounds as well for you, Pisces. Next of all, Venus moving through your third house for the first three weeks of June opens up uh, in a great dignity, a lot of pleasure and enjoyment of your local neighborhood. Your siblings, aunts, uncles, and cousins can bring you good news and blessings. And you may find yourself really motivated to do pleasurable learning experiences, all right? Enjoying the thing you're learning or learn Venusian things, creative, artistic, woodworking, painting, sculpture, you know, crafty things as well. Gardening, okay? Um, there is this kind of a, like intensity around June 10th, 11th, 12th, when Venus jumps into action and meets with first Uranus. And then a few days later, the North node, this is exhilarating, exciting, dramatic change of things coming from the house of siblings and all those things I said, house of travel, a, a sudden opportunity for a trip. How exciting a sibling coming to visit a sibling, giving you some kind of exciting developments or news or information. So that's all happening in that window of mid June. Um, as I said, June 10th to maybe about June 20th, 18th, 20th. Then on top of that, we have Mercury who will station on Elgol in your third house of siblings. Now, this could be um, a dramatic and not even, even pleasant experience around June 3rd of some information or news or something going on with a sibling. However, there's also the possibility, sometimes, you know, the eclipse that activates Algol is eclipsing Algol, right? So it's, well, this was the sun on Algol, so it really wasn't. So I'm not even going to go there. But anyway, the gist of it is, is that be very careful regarding travel for you. Don't travel if you can avoid it in that first week of June when Algol is really hot in the sky. And do not travel necessarily if you can avoid it, short trips and travel. Uh, and when Venus is back on Algol around the 20th, 19th, 20th, 18th, 19th, 20th of the month, okay, of June. You just don't want to take a chance since there's like corpses, corpses and mayhem and calamity associated with algal. And you don't want to be in a like 10 car pile up is what I'm saying, especially those shorter trips and travel. Now, also Pisces, um, with Venus uh, here and your feeling like she exalts you, right? She's a planet that exalts you. You can have some exalted opportunities for travel, like something out of the, outside the box. Someone pays for your ticket. Somebody offers you a trip of a century. So keep your ears and eyes open for those opportunities coming in the month of June. Mercury will be retrograding uh, and then going, as he said, stations forward, but then it moves into your fourth house where he will be for the last two weeks of June. So June 14th and the last two weeks of the month, he is supporting you regarding legal contracts, legal affairs, and agreements to do with home, land, and real estate. Also, a lot of communication and messaging and learning and study can be happening in and from your home life. This is a fast moving Mercury. Now he's starting to speed up in the, near the end of the month. And he's going to try to bring good things in that regard, especially though between the 14th and the 21st or so when the sun is still in your fourth house, this is an auspicious time for legal agreements regarding home, signing contracts and documents for a new lease, buying, selling, moving, all of those things. The full moon is shining in your 10th house, but it is square Neptune. That is on the 14th of June. It impacts you for the two weeks that follow. It's probably a seed you planted in your career past six months ago. Neptune square. Neptune's in the house of you. It's a modern ruler of you. What ways can you self-delude or, or, or be uh, in your own self-deceptive mode and not see something clearly about how your career should unfold. And maybe you might have to come to a declarative completion, although you may not see clearly why or how regarding some ambition you had for success in career. Um, maybe if you go back roughly six months earlier, what seeds did you plant in January that no longer seem relevant to now? Um, possible interpretations there. Anything else I need to tell you? Maybe I'll just say you do have a beautiful moon that is coming at the end of the month on June 26th or 29th, I should say, and it's going to be in cancer and that will be a new fresh start for you in the house of what brings you joy, independent business enterprise and a relationship to your children, romance, especially if you're a single Pisces, that is going to bring a new seed, a new beginning coming at the very tail end of this month of June. So that's a very, uh, 
one of the windows of auspiciousness in your sky is that fifth house new beginning. And for a lot of single Pisces, there's no doubt about it. There's going to be a new relationship that can unfold in the six months that follow. And that moon is happening in the early degrees, I believe, maybe seven degrees of Cancer, if I remember correctly. So if your Pisces sun, moon, or rising is in the first 10 degrees, that's an auspicious moon for you coming in the end of this month. Well, I think I covered everything. Did I cover Saturn retrograde for you guys? Saturn retrograding in your 12th house. Okay. Saturn here is sage like. He makes you a loner. He makes you for two and a half years, very alone. He wants you to be contemplative, ga navel gaze, cut away the dead wood in your self undoings, learn to see the sage-like masterful qualities of spiritual stuff. You may want to learn something and really dig in during that window of time. This started in December of 2020 and will not end uh -huh, until March of 23. I had that transit. I dug into Hellenistic astrology. I learned like, th I, I learned so much different astrology stuff during that transit, man. And I was super hermity in Montreal living alone. Oh my God. In a city I knew, knew, knew nobody. It was a total, so being celibate, being alone, being hermity, being sage-like, being a cave dweller, being a monk. Um, um, learning, 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 deep learning, uh, studying in astrology, for example, these are the things that really are supported for you. Now, with the retrogradation of Saturn, it's more enjoyable and less difficult. All of those things become less anxious and more simply what they seem to be. And mm, so you may go back over some old ground of some things you have been learning and learn it more deeply with more ease and flow. If you're a Pisces rising, the window is June 4th, October 23rd, when Saturn's retrograde. Of course, I will do a special just retrograde Saturn video. Stay tuned for that. There'll be a lot more depth, including stars and asteroids, but that's the overview. Okay. Thank you all for listening to this video. Like, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications, because when you do hit the bell for notifications, then you are going to know when I post a video. And when you like and subscribe, it helps my channel grow. And that's the only reason I'm here, because I'm teaching stuff to you and giving you free information. When my channel grows, I get a little bit of ad revenue. And yes, it buys me some perks like my massage or my, you know, you know, fine bottle of wine and stuff like that. I joined a, a float club. If you're still listening, you know, flotation tank thing that I used to do all the time. And I joined it like just when Delta hit. Now I'm backlogged and I have like five unused floats. So I'm going to start floating in June. <laughs> floating. I know you Pisces can relate. Um, so your participation on my channel gives me those monies that I could use. Believe me, ad revenue is like stupidly low, right? Like I'm at 200 bucks a month right now <clears throat> from all these videos I give you guys, just being full disclosure. That's how it works with YouTube. No one actually gets rich on the ad revenues, but if you do support my channel, I do make a little bit of perk money for my life. And of course I get you guys, uh, liking and commenting and hopefully joining my cosmic moonshine newsletter where we can have a more intimate connection together in my weekly forecasts and my Patreon community, if you want to join as well. All right, guys, ciao, ciao. Big hugs.